Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Brian. And I'm William. This is the podcast where we talk about everything Dungeons and Dragons. And today we're talking about Yoke Lols. What's up, Brian? Hey, Will. How are you doing? This may this name of this creature, it's a uh-huh. creature, right? It's, it's very a creature. Me- very meme Yes, it is. It's very meme <laughs> The Yoke Lols. The yokels. The yokels. Almost like yokels. Uh, yeah, almost like yokels, but not. <laughs> but not though. <laughs> but Satan's friends though. Uh, so Wait, are these de- demons or devils? Uh, they are demons. Oh, and, we're back. Uh, yes, we are back in the year of the fiend. It continues. That's right, and uh, it's almost done. Kind of. Yeah, we're getting close. We're getting quite close. In fact, it's the holidays. Yep, yep. And we are making up for lost time by two, doing two fiendish episodes in a row. Uh, you know that we talk a lot about Archdukes of Hell and Demon Lords on of the Abyss on this show. Mm-hmm. Uh, but did you know that there are also gods who fraternize with fiends? Uh, it sounds like lots of people fraternize with fiends. So gods, like good? Uh, good aligned gods? No, not usually. No, okay, definitely, I was gonna definitely say, not. No, no. You're not good if you're doing demon if shit. Fraternizing with fiends. No. Right. And some of these gods even dwell in the Abyss. Ooh. And that some of these abyss dwelling gods are actually goddesses. So when you say gods, they're, they're gods. not demon lords. Well, but they're, in they're, the abyss. they're both, but I think the the god part supersedes it. I see. Okay. Yeah, and and, and one particular abyssal goddess has her own bespoke species of demon that serves her and only her. Oh, that's right. If you haven't figured it out, this is a Lolth episode. <laughs> I was gonna say it's got Zuckmoy and Lolth pretty much. Yeah, the, but Zuckmoy's not a goddess. Oh, okay. Yeah, because that's right. All. Yeah. No, all god in the abyss all gods are demon lords but not all demon lords are gods i think that tracks i don't know if it's 100 percent, but i think it, it is the close. case with loth for sure anything can happen in the in the abyss as right. long as it's evil and chaotic indeed specifically it's an episode about her greatest demonic servants the yoke lol holy shit loth's back loth's back well, so, sort of. So Loth is both a fiend and a goddess, and she commands as many hordes of demon kind as any other self-respecting demon lord. But that wasn't enough for her. She also had to go and create her own special one of a kind, only to be found in her layer of the abyss, Secret Service Demon. Oh, yes. <laughs> so let's get into it. I would love that. Yeah. L- Yoklos are a species of demon famously known as the Handmaidens of Loth. They have four different forms that they can take in any time. Ooze form, humanoid form, spider form, and gaseous form. Okay, uh, they can switch between them? Yep, they can switch between them <laughs> as well. Ooze form, activate! <laughs> yeah, <Blech>. exactly. <laughs> In their natural form, Yoklos uh, is their ooze form. Standing on average six to seven feet. Oh, 1.8 to 2.1 meters. Tall and roughly 250 pounds. That's 113.3 kilograms, folks. <laughs> their yellow, oozy bodies seem to be constantly melting and piling back up like a sickening living candle. Adding to their foul appearance is the fact that their waxy exterior constantly effuses a wretched stench. Unlike their oozes, uh, unlike other oozes that tend to be oblong or amorphous in shape, yokels are more visually akin to ropers with oh. eight writhing, powerful tentacles and a pillar-like main body with a singular sinister scarlet eye in the middle. Ropers are scary. Ropers are scary. So we haven't really if, talked about them on the show. If Jubilex wasn't so lazy, he'd probably be mad about this, huh? Probably, actually. He'd probably be <laughs> like, what the fuck? Hey, he's fucking cramping my style <laughs> over there with the ooze stuff. Come so on. next up, we have their most seen form. Yoklos can take on the appearance of an attractive, slender, human or elven female, most commonly that of a drow. Yeah, that tracks because um, mm-hmm. loath. Yeah, and they are reasons. all female. Yoklos are all female, by the okay. way. This form is unique to each Yoklo and cannot be crafted in such a way as to replicate other individuals. The humanoid form of a Yoklo is often slightly taller than the average members of uh, the race that they're mimicking. Also, a Yoklo cannot morph clothes and thus needs to tend to keep a pair nearby when entering this form. So if you're tuned in to the demon shit and you're like, that drow looks kind of tall. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. suspicious. Yep, indeed. All right. Due to their incredible ability to mimic her chosen people, the drow, the queen of spiders often has these eight-limbed abominations infiltrate drow societies completely undetected. Mm, okay, so they're just hanging out. Yeah. Got it. Spying. Right. And probably right. causing secret ruckus. service. Because she causes ruckus amongst her people all the time. Just for the just for the fucking thrill. For, for the, the chaos, lulls, if you will. For the lulls. <laughs> for the yokels. For the yokels. <laughs> the third form a yokel. Somebody kill us. <laughs> yeah. Third form of uh, a yokel could take is that of a giant arachnid with a leg span of eight feet. That's 2.4 meters. And weighing roughly 160 pounds. Which is 73 kilograms, folks. So they tend to weigh. Do they tend to weigh more when they're. In ooze form? 
They do. They weigh more in ooze form. That's weird. Guess so. Maybe it's more compact. Yeah, it's all the same. You know, when you're a body, you have your bones are a different weight than your muscles and stuff, I guess. You have to like I don't know. lighten up some of your mass. <laughs> Whatever, bro. Yeah. Specifically, <laughs> this form tends to strongly resemble a massive black widow with a pair of dangerous fangs. Cool. Finally, Yoklos can take on a gaseous appearance. This form is a green cloud of murky smoke vaguely similar to that of its true form. It has the same pillar-like body but slightly larger, uh, 10 feet. That's 3 meters. High and 5 feet. Which is 1.5 meters. Wide in diameter. It can also manifest several pseudopods at will, and their oily vapor in this form is still just as malodorous as the reeking of their sludge form. Now, what would a pseudopod that came out of a gas cloud look like? I don't know. I I really don't know. (laughs) here it's just it's just a fucking fist comes out of the gas and punches you in the well face. I, I imagine the pseudopod is still gaseous right so sure. how how much damage is it going to do if it if it pseudopods you right does it does the damage change between form i guess we'll find out in the back half of this episode maybe Stay we tuned will the stat maybe block. we will maybe yeah who yeah. knows what they actually detail in the stat block yes they doesn't always reflect the yeah, lore this is a 5e monster manual stat block which is uh notorious for not uh for stripping away for stripping away cool many stuff. of the things yes okay yokels are most often found in their abyssal layer of origin the demon web pits mm-hmm. within it they commonly serve as los enforcers scouts and appropriately appropriately as actual handmaidens to the demon queen when on other layers of the abyss, they are normally in disguise performing espionage on other demonic powers. Interesting. Uh, because most demons, including demon lords, are aware that Yoklo exclusively work for Loth, they normally give them a wide berth. The Spider Queen's minions are only uh, interfered with rarely, as Yoklo have an immensely close relationship to their master and are allowed to roam the layers of the abyss inhibited, uninhibited. Now, this I find very interesting. Okay. So, what the lore says is that since other demon lords know that Yoklos can't be recruited, they can't. They they only work for her, and they're super close to her. Mm-hmm. Like she and she takes her relationship with them seriously. They don't fuck with them. What that tells me is that demon lords, and I suspected this for a long time. I just never saw it written down. Demon lords are scared of Loth because Loth is fucking stronger than any of them. Yeah, like I think this goes out saying Loth is stronger than any other demon lord because she is both a demon lord and a goddess. So they don't fuck with her. And she mostly doesn't fuck with them because she's not really interested in the blood war and all that other stuff. While I take umbrage with this statement, (laughs) I can see on paper what you mean. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Moving on. <laughs> only shout out to the Demogorgon. Shout out to the Demogorgon. Only high priestesses of the Queen of Spiders are given the ability to summon a Yokel to the Prime Material Plane. Uh, and they are only supposed to call upon in dire need or to witness sacrifices in the name of the Dark Goddess. <laughs> you guys want to come watch some sick shit? Yeah. This is, do. <laughs> this is, of course, when they are not infiltrating drought civilizations, whether in the open or in secret. Who's free right now? You guys on spy missions? <laughs> nah? All right. Let's go see some sick shit. Indeed. Uh, Loth also, uh, uses Yoklos to spy on the drow and ensure they are worshipping her properly. They also work under drow matrons, either as assassins, advisors, or even lovers in some case. Yes. <laughs> Yoklos are also used as direct channel as a direct channel of communication to and from the abyss. Some of Loth's most faithful believe they will be reincar- they will be reincarnated into Yoklo if they devote themselves to her completely. <laughs> I pray to my God so I can one day hope to be slightly taller. Yeah, sure. <laughs> or a well, gas I mean, cloud. Powerful, prestigious, and beloved of Loth. Right. Like Loth doesn't like most anything that isn't her. It seems like she does have an actual, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not affinity, but a um, a soft spot for the Yoklos. Like, they, they mean something to her. They sound like an extension of her. Yeah. And we're going to get not into- Not quite her, which is yeah. why she doesn't love them the same. Maybe. But... Maybe that's it. Okay. Yoklos are behavioral anomalies in the ranks of demonic beings in more ways than one, really. Uh, but one particularly odd way is that although they delight both in cruelty and combat and relish domination of other creatures, they are also known to make genuine friendships. These friendships are almost always with either each other or with charismatic mortals because due to their status as Lulz Chosen, other demons- uh, types hate and fear them on a deep and visceral level. Uh, further exasperating the demonic hatred is the fact that by decree of Loth, all are forbidden from harming a Yoklo. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's weird. Like, they actually have the capacity of friendship despite being demons. 
All right. That that is that is quite strange. Yes. That is much different than I've come to know demons. Mm-hmm. More than just friendship, lo- Yokelos seem to be capable of even falling in love with other inv- individuals. However, Yokelos tend to have a bizarre, duplicitous, contradictory, and even backward outlook of their relationship. I was going to say, what does that love look it's like? It's not great. It's abusive. So, for example, Yokelos have a strong tendency to abandon partners whose acquaintances are accepting of the fact that they are a Yoklo. <laughs> Uh, what? Yeah. Hold on, what? Yes. So if they are in a relationship with somebody and that somebody's people know they're a Yoklo, but they're totally chill with it, Yoklo is going to bounce. <laughs> You're like, how are you just okay with me? Yeah, basically. <laughs> oh, God. So, And yet if their lovers, friends, and family are unaccepting and even persecuting of them, they will be driven to cling to the relationship and will, of course, furiously vent their anger on these perpetrators. They want the animosity. They right. want the drama. They want the drama. Uh, some theorize that Yoklo act this way because they enjoy the downfall of these individuals under the burden of their relationship. Uh huh. You know, they are demons. Yeah. But oddly enough, Yoklo never betray, lie to, or harm their lovers, and they have a tendency to go into a rage when their lovers die. I know you don't understand my new girlfriend, Mom, but she <laughs> loves me. She would never cheat, never lie, never steal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So another oddity about them is that unlike other demons, they do not have rivalries amongst their own kind. This is because they do not view one another as competition. They readily and eagerly cooperate with other handmaidens uniting together under a common goal to serve Loth. Unless enemies of Loth are present, Yoglos do not engage in killing sprees or frenzies of mindless violence. So that's a big difference from the Drow, right? Because they have this hierarchy and they're in fierce competition, like constantly. That's very true, and, and that's because that's the way Loth has set it up, right? Yeah, but she, she wants that, but, but the Yoglos don't obey those those yeah, hierarchies, and that's not how she set it up with them. They they are a, a union. They are they are unified. Yeah, they are one. Mm-hmm. They're one amorphous blob, <laughs> or just like whatever shape, I guess. Yeah, whatever they whatever choose. Whatever form they, cho- they choose. Ironically, despite their ability to get along with their own kind and even other mortals, they are contemptuous of other demons and do not associate with them if they can all help it. Uh, this includes them being completely ambivalent about the state of the blood war, which is not surprising because I'm pretty sure Lolf stays completely out of the blood war and does not care about it at all. That tracks. Yeah. Like, why put resources into that? Yeah, she's it's like, handled, dude. There's so she's many. Like, I happen to be in the abyss, but I don't care about the abyss. No. Yeah. Yeah, D- D- Loth D- does her own shit. Yeah, exactly. And yet, another oddity about Yoklos is that unlike most demons, they need food to survive, uh, at least uh, every 20 days. Uh, their food can take the form of either gas and liquid, but most prefer blood above anything else. Oh. Furthermore, Yoklos have a clear preference for living prey. Okay, so are they just like They're slurping? They're almost vampiric. They slurp people up, yeah. They're slurping the like whole Like a pe- spider would. Or yeah, like like they're vampiric, right? Yeah, like, in that way. So yeah. Well, I know in D and D, there's like strict differences of what a vampire is. But, yeah, like, yeah. But in the more yeah. traditional sense, they're eating the blood of their prey. Yeah. So does or, that mean they're farming it, or do they have to slurp up the whole? I kind of get into it here. So okay. eating is done normally in their humanoid form, uh, by envelopment in their natural form, you know, like a news would, mm-hmm. uh, and by absorption in their gas form. Okay. In any state, the bones and other hard matter is left behind, either harmlessly and quickly pushed out in ooze form or simply falling to the ground when in gaseous form or, you know, not consumed in the humanoid form. So, Got it. Just yeah. left on the table. It's, All right. Yeah. Uh, for a long time, it was unknown how Loth created her handmaidens, with only rumors circulating among planar travelers. But as it turns out, it is through a series of unknown tortures and dark ceremonies. Loth created the lo- Yoklo from succubi that she captures from other layers of the abyss. These newly created Yoklo remember nothing of their former life and are completely loyal to their new mistress, although it is unknown if this loyalty is programmed in or simply due to extreme fear. I think it's programmed in. It's sounds like it's programmed that's like what it feels the, like to be these too. are constructed consciousness they seem like truly devoted and loyal they yeah. don't seem like they like serving out of fear right. uh this process does not need to be conducted by loth herself but she and her closest consorts are the only ones with knowledge of how to conduct it if the secret were to leak and spread throughout the abyss there would be nothing stopping yoklo from being created by other demon lords as well oh okay. that would be so some crazy formula shit. yeah go in there and get the secret Krabby Patty formula. Indeed. <laughs> the abilities of a Yoklo are all dependent on their current state, but some are consistent throughout their various forms. Within seconds, they can transform from one form to any of their other forms. At all times, Yoklo are protected from having their minds read or alignment sense. Now hear me out. Yeah. So Loth is Mr. Krabs, and Mordenkainen is 
plankton and he has to go in <laughs> okay. and get the, he wants to make yolk yeah, right yeah. that would be that would I be I mean epic. why why Morton kind of though I'm curious he, he seemed he came up in the uh, Mephistopheles he, he did, episode he did. about like spying on yeah. people but I, I don't know but he I, seems like the kind of dude I that picture would do that other demon lords being like that though They're, yeah they, but can yeah. they can they would they um I mean the right one would I'm sure uh, uh, Baphomet is a great example of a plankton Sure. Because he's always trying to create new beasties. And like Lolth has her own new, super loyal, very effective beasties that only she can make. And he probably wants to know how. That's a cool. I, I'm looking at it from a and d perspective where we uh-huh. like structure a campaign uh-huh. to yeah. like. So I, I'm thinking of more of like a player to to DM. Um, oh, sort like of how do we send the the players on a v- mission? Via Mordenkainen. Yeah. yeah, yeah or that or makes... somebody like Mordenkainen sure, sure. or I don't know. I maybe Graze, Tasha. Big Will is, a, is another one. Exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I do we have to be careful about what we now know about Igwilf and her current 5e state? Because mm. we were big on the Igwilf episode talking about the spoilers for Wild Beyond the Witchlight. Yeah, I mean... Should I be... I, sh- I feel like I should be careful to be like... I think until it is actually published in like a source book instead of an adventure module, ah. I think, yeah, we, we should be spoiler uh, 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 avert, avertant, okay. if you will. Okay. Um. A slew of magical and psionic abilities make Yolklul dangerous foes. Uh, Charming and domination magic as well as the ability to read minds make them incredibly difficult to socially outgun them. Uh, In all their corporeal forms, they are somewhat spider-like, able to create webs, navigate them, and climb on walls. If in particular danger, there is a half chance that they can call a second Yolklul for aid to escape their threat. Um, With the favor of Loth, Yolklul have minor divine protection from harm, making them even more difficult to injure than your average demon. Um, in either humanoid or true form, uh, a Yolklul's touch is as venomous as that of, a, of spider's fangs. Within their arachnid form, their true fangs are laid bare and it's far easier for them to use their more spider-like powers. While in the form of a toxic mist, Yolklul are capable of flight and slipping through any airtight space. Uh, they can fly near living beings and force them to breathe their noxious forms, causing them deadly illness. Right. Uh, they cannot be harmed in this state by non-magical weapons. So, like, why not always be the gas? Like when you're doing well, spy you, missions, sure. But yeah, like, well, when you're interacting with, if you want to interact with something physically, you can't. I think is, is yeah. Kind of but when you're in a when fight, fight or whatever, I think yeah, it's, it's kind of knows. advantageous. But maybe they're they're limited in all their other abilities. Yeah, like you can't be a gas underwater, and you well, can't be a gas and cast spells. Oh, maybe you, you're just a yokelo bubble. Yeah. <laughs> Nasty. You're just a fart bubble under just, the sea. Yep, we're we're back to farting in the underdark. Yes, I was thinking a lot yeah. about the underdark for yeah. this uh, this particular. So thing. maybe that's why they don't become gaseous forms that much because a lot of times they're in the underdark. And as you know, as has been established on the show, don't fart in the underdark. Do not fart there. You will be found and killed. You will. Yeah. So, in either humanoid or true form, a yokel. Sto- oh, we already read yep, that. Yep. Uh, oh, I'm on my last one. Furthermore. Many Yokel train to enhance their abilities, often as priests or sorcerers, but most often as bards. Bards are often welcome in the halls of nobility, furthering the Yokel's infiltration ability. Remember, Say they, what? Can, they can turn into humans, too. Right. And yes. so sometimes they do. So And they bard about. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Uh, the halls of nobility? Yeah. So, okay. I mean, how often... If a bard comes to town, like a truly famous bard. Oh, you just mean in general? Yeah, like oh, come okay. to my castle, put on a show, my banquet. I was, I was almost like, why isn't this proper noun? It sounded so proper nouny, like the halls of, like this should be oh, something I know. Oh no, no, it's the halls of nobility in general. Yes, yes, just like they'll let you into their castle. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Free of charge. <laughs> For they'll sure. Let you sleep there. I was so fucking confused right now. I was like, what is this new place? And no, no, it's not like of. a specific place. No, no. Okay. No. So that's all I have in your clothes. Uh, we'll go over the stat block momentarily, but do you have questions before we take a short rest? Uh, what do you think a Yoko sounds like when they laugh out loud? <laughs> and what, that, is that the human form? No, that's <laughs> definitely the ooze form. I thought that's that was a form. Okay, yeah. give me a spider form. No, I'll do it. I'll do a it. Chittering. Yeah, yeah. The chi- <laughs> All right, let's take a short rest. All right. Shout out to Demon Shout out to Shout out to Shout out to We've returned. Indeed, we have. We are back. Indeed We're in we the are. back half of these Yolk Lulls episode. <laughs> Not the back half of the Yolk Lull. Yeah, the backwoods of the oh, Yolk no. Yolkels. So you're going to tell me all about the stat block. I am. I have the stat block in front of me. You know, it. you're flipping through the books and you see these mo- these images of these monsters 
And then you get this lore dump that we get in this episode about mm-hmm. it. I was like, dude, mm-hmm. I've, I've seen this monster for years so many times, and <coughs> oh, I yeah. never knew that it was... I think it's a pretty iconic D&D monster, yeah. Yeah, it's so in-depth, and yeah, it's a demon and everything, but it just looks like a like a tree, like a big yellow tree with an eyeball in it. That's pretty I cool. Guess, I guess it has some tree-likeness to it. I it mean, is goopy, right? Yeah. Like, I see, like, the stringy goopiness I mean, here, coming here's off one it. that's not very tree-like. Oh, my. Yeah, it's, like, halfway between the two forms. That's... What an interesting piece of art. Mm-hmm. That is indeed, okay. Indeed well, is. I have no idea where that's from, but it's um, definitely not out of the D and D book. It's I think it's from a third edition. Uh, thing. I see. So a D and D book. Yeah, I'm trying to find the stat block, but Google is not. I'll, I'll get started on this yeah. one. Well, if you if you guys I sorry, we along. forgot to do the, our little uh, post short rest plug. After oh, you yeah, take yeah, a nap, yeah. you should figure out how to support us. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Um, right now, we're f- kind of focused on iTunes reviews. Those ones are are super mm-hmm. cool. And Patreon, uh, of course. And, and always Patreon. Patreon.com slash DungeonCast is where you can go to support us monetarily. We really appreciate it. You get some cool benefits out of it, like getting to see episode notes, early episodes, weekly newsletters, uh, patron-voted oh, yeah. top episode topics. Yep. Yeah, people chomping uh, at the bit. New shows coming out. What Early access to Omega and Unhallowed. We are recording there are, our first episode soon. There's Omega stuff out now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we're yeah we're, we're finally recording all these shows we've been talking about for a, a while now. But it's happening. It's a, it's always a long pre production is a long process. Mm-hmm, it takes mm-hmm. a lot of work. It's a huge part of any show. Um, mm-hmm. That's that's something that not a lot of people get to see about what we do here. But mm-hmm. it, it does take a ton of work to get a new project going. So. Thanks for being patient with us, and thanks for supporting us uh, wherever you choose to do it. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. We, we really appreciate all of it, so thank you guys so much. Uh, Yokels are medium fiends. They're demons and shape changers of chaotic evil. Yes. They have an armor class of 15. Natty. <laughs> <laughs> Their HP is 136. That's 16d8 plus 64. Their speed is 30 feet of uh, regular walking, and they also have 30 feet of climbing speed. Uh, strength is a plus 2. Dex, plus two. Con, plus four. Intelligence, plus one. Wisdom, plus two. And charisma, plus two. They're very sturdy. Boof. Boof. Big buff, con. Buff stat. Boof is a different thing. Buff stat block. Uh, so I, challenge rating is 10. I want to skip ahead just to get like a touchstone. Um, it's strange that that's so far down the block. I've always thought that. So yeah, I feel like, it should, I, I feel right like it should be right up top. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Because oftentimes, as a DM, I'm looking for like something within a specific CR range, mm-hmm. and it's just in such an awkward place that it slows down my my the perusing. En- the encounter builder in D and D Beyond lets you filter by CR, and that that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. So uh, saving throws, we got Dex plus six, Intelligence plus five, Wisdom plus six, and Charisma plus six. Good All saves. respectable. Yeah. Uh, they're skilled in deception, which is a plus ten, and insight, which is a plus six. They oh, that res- tracks with the lore pretty well, I think. They resist cold, fire, lightning, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical attacks. They're yeah. immune to being poisoned. Uh, Big surprise. They they have damage immunity to poison. They they can't take damage from poison or become the poison condition. Yes, two different things. Uh, senses. They have dark vision of 120 feet with a passive perception of 12. These are Gonna be mainly underdark demons, I feel like. Yeah, under you're gonna find them in the underdark or the abyss ninety nine percent of the time. Yeah. So they only go cloud form above the surface <laughs> where they become farts. Languages abyssal, elvish, and undercommon. Yeah. All tracks. All tracks. Uh challenge rating, like we said earlier, is ten. It's gonna yield five thousand nine hundred experience points. Proficiency bonus is a plus four. Do you use the proficiency bonus like outside of the stat block in any way? Like, I don't know. I feel like everything you need is baked in. Why label the proficiency bonus? I mean, okay. Bonus? Uh, the pro- labeling the proficiency bonus is important if you're adding anything. Okay. Or, like, let's say this particular Yoklo, for example, maybe it's also trained in perception and, and something else that isn't in the stat block. That if you wanted to calculate it, you would use the proficiency bonus with the. Okay, with cool. The so stuff, it, yeah. this is a. This is a a throw, not a throw, and it's written in there so that you can homebrew effectively. Yes, and exactly. know what to kind of gauge its its right. abilities. At. It's important that it's there, especially considering five E is really big on like quote unquote putting the reins in the hands of the of the DM, mm-hmm. which is like actually really controversial in a lot of ways, in understandable ways too. Um, but uh, but yeah, without that, it would it would suck because like you you need to be able to homebrew in this game because like quite frankly, nothing is um, tuned up as much as it should be, in my opinion. Same, same. Yeah. We, I think we've come to that conclusion multiple times. Yeah. 
Shape Changer. The yokel can use its action to polymorph into a form that resembles a female drow or giant spider. I like how, or back into its true form. I like how they say it's a polymorph. So they they have axed gas form already. Already we we are we've reached a point where Five E has axed something from the lore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any equipment it's wearing or carrying is not transformed. It reverts to its true form or it dies. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, it reverts to its true form if it dies. <laughs> or, or, it or it dies. dies. Whoops. Uh, okay, magic resistance. The yokel has advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects. Very cool. Spider climb. The yokel can climb difficult surfaces, including upside down on ceilings, without needing to make an ability check. Mm-hmm. Um, something lots of warlocks get to do, like things that obey demon lords, I guess. Uh, innate spell casting. The yokel's spell casting ability is charisma. Spell save DC is 14, right? Because they're bards. Mm. The yokel can innately cast the following spells requiring no material components. At will, detect thoughts and web. And once a day, it can dominate person. Now, I find this lackluster. Like, it, we just talked about in the lore how many yokels, like, become sorcerers and, and bards. Like, mm-hmm. I just feel like there should be more spells. There should be. Uh, and and piggybacking off of what you said about nothing being tuned up quite enough, go ahead and add some. Yep. Um the the warlock spell list is probably a great place to start. Yeah, I I, I would say so. Yeah, for the demon stuff. Mm-hmm. Anyway, there's mm-hmm. going to be some like whatever you know. They give you the standard. Here's what you get as a warlock outside of your yeah. chosen spell list. Yeah. Also, an enchant uh, wizard is another good one because a lot of enchantment spells. That's true. I I feel like the enchantment stuff is interesting because elves have resistance against that sort of thing. So does that imply that they're good at it? They they're like they can resist it and then do it good. I mean, I think in the lore, yeah, there's a lot of enchanter elves, uh, sorcerers, so maybe, but I, I don't know. I never really thought about it. Uh, they get a multi-attack. The yokel makes two melee attacks. Those melee attacks, the first one is uh, a slam or a bite in spider form, but they're going to stat the same. Melee weapon attack with a plus six to hit, a reach of five feet, ten feet in their demon form. One target, it's going to hit for five or 1d6 plus two bludge. That's bludgeoning. <laughs> I shouldn't just say bludge. Bludgeoning. Uh, piercing in spider form. And then the damage is going to be plus 21 or 66. or 66 poison damage. Nice. They're not very good against fighting each other. No, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. Mist form. So is that it? That's oh, the wait. One. We have a mist form. Here, so, we're well, back to gas well, it can form. Just do, it's multi-attack. It's just the slam or bite. So it just does either two slams or two bites. I mean, that tracks for like its physical abilities. The Yoklo is supposed to have those physical abilities, but plus a, all the spellcasting stuff. Yes. Yeah, so typically, when you have a multi-attack, there's two different... I know there's a slam and a bite, but I would figure like there'd be a slam and a... I don't know, something else. There's usually two things there to multi-attack with. Well, I don't know. I think a lot of uh, monsters, uh, especially the not higher level ones, their multi-attack is just two of the same thing. Okay. Two spear attacks, two sword attacks, That's two slams. I guess it's fine. Yeah. Like when you look at the fighter. Yeah. All right, mist form. The yokel transforms into toxic mist or reverts its to its true form any equipment it is wearing or carrying is also transformed it reverts to its true form if it dies while in mist form the yokel is incapacitated and can't speak it has a fly let's look at incapacitated yeah right incapacitated uh when you're incapacitated a creature can't take actions or reactions it's okay so how it says it has a flying speed of 30 feet well what the fuck is the point of that if you're incapacitated well you can move at, oh, I guess movement isn't an action. Okay, right. Yeah. It's it's your move action, right? Yeah, but it's yeah, not yeah. an action. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, um, gotcha. It has a flying speed of 30 feet, can hover, and can pass through any space that isn't airtight. It has advantage on strength, dexterity, and constitution saving throws, and is immune to non-magical damage. Now, why would it get advantage on a strength saving throw? On any of the... On, on strength or dex saving throw. I think the idea here is that because whatever is trying to, like, out-strength you is passing through you instead. Right, but, like... The fact that you wouldn't just auto succeed it, it's, it's, it's a little, a little weird. weird. Yeah. It's a little weird, but okay. Um, while in mist form, the yokel can enter a creature's space and stop there. Uh, each time that creature starts its turn with the yokel in its space, the creature must succeed on a DC 14 constitution saving throw or be poisoned until the start of its next turn. While poisoned in this way, the target is incapacitated. Oh, wow. That's okay. That's pretty. That's good. Yeah, that's potent right there. It also tracks with like the whole yeah. spy thing. I'm going to knock you I out. I just want to become this 
this innocuous cloud. You know? Yeah, yeah, and like hover above and out of sight. But but also it's just like you're fighting this thing that suddenly turns into gas. You can't hurt it, and it envelops you, and suddenly you're incapacitated. Yeah, that would be funny to like, um like there's a yokel like in its whatever physical form you want, mm-hmm. and it moves out of your sight into a different chamber. You follow it. And, you know, maybe you're in the underdark, so everything's very dark, mm-hmm. right? You yeah. can't see. <laughs> and then you walk in, and there's, like, there's nothing in here. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden, you're incapacitated. Love it. That's Crazy great. stuff. Mm-hmm. That's a good trap. Nice yeah. trap. And now you're Lulz prisoner. All right. So what do you think? What do you think of this stat block? Uh, this is cool. This is not... When I look at this goopy tree with the eyeball in it, this is not what I thought this was. You know, okay. like, okay. This, this doesn't, like... You know, it's this big yellow thing. You don't... This thing doesn't scream loth. Dry doesn't s- scream loth. Of course they do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, drow scream loth. This doesn't look like I You look at things. that, it screams ju- jewel blacks for I sure. I actually re- yes. I actually really like the stat puck. Um, it's cool. I my only main it's got thing some is pitfalls. It, it needs a couple spells, I think. Like maybe charm person. Mm. Like give it give it charm person or uh what's another charming spell? Like um, suggestion and there we um, go. Yeah, uh, you know, there's other shit. I yeah. can't think of it right Maybe now. A few but like that. I actually forgot. There's web walker. I, I was looking at this. I didn't say this part. It was oh. underneath the spells. Uh, the yokel ignores movement restrictions caused by webbing. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So while it's in the webbed domains of Lulth, mm-hmm. like yeah, mm-hmm. I did some cool stuff in the Underdark one time where um I was I was test playing for Super Quest Omega, and uh with a group of buddies and I had a uh big empty expansive dark space that they had to like kind of aimlessly walk through with this like fire lantern that had this like blue demonic fire that was leading the way they had to like get into this place with like a fucking like drows had to like they cut a deal with one of the leaders of the group they made like a sacrifice to let them in here and they got approached by a a big drider on a web that that came down while they were sleeping Mm -hmm. and it woke them all up and they were like you know face to face with this thing and it couldn't it like saw the fire or whatever and was like ah cool you're you're allowed in oh, here or whatever. Like, oh okay so yokel shit would have been cool, like to have little yokels like crawling along like, yeah that would been cool too a big drider lots of yokel like spider things going on you're in the mm. domain of loth in the underdark yeah Scary they were shit. taking like a shortcut through the underdark to get to a place but they were in the clear they were in the they That's were in the cool. clear That's interesting. yeah the um the leader of that party ends up being uh the one that takes this like he knows these dark priestesses of Loth or priests of Loth or whatever. Um, and I, I had it be Isma and Kronk, so I was doing like a Patrick War. <laughs> I was doing a Patrick Warburton. Yeah. So she kills okay. she kills Patrick Warburton. Oh no. She kills the Kronk. Do you guy. have a good Patrick Warburton impression? I do. Oh, I don't think I can do it right now. Yes, I do have a good oh, Patrick Warburton. You're I can, gonna have to show it to There you. are there's high level Patrick Warburton yeah. and low level Patrick yes, Warburton. Yes, yes. And I can do the in between one pretty good. Oh, okay, for sure. I, I didn't have to hear it. But yeah, I love his voice. I can voice, do the so. high the high one too. Yeah. Okay. I always have to it's me, Patrick Warburton. I have to like start with that. You got to warm up the vocals. I, I definitely had to work on it before I did it. Okay, for sure. For a while, for sure. yeah. So they kill the the priestess kills Kronk uh-huh. and brings him back to <laughs> life to Kronk give is them one the, of my favorite characters. The, the, I love yeah, <laughs> Kronk is so good. <laughs> yeah, uh, gives them the the thing they need. I I would have loved to have added the yokels in there, but I only have you didn't know about. I it. I only have what we've talked about at my disposal. Yeah, which is three hundred episodes worth plus. <laughs> right, and but, now you know we haven't covered everything. Now I get to yeah. pocket yokels again. Yeah. Just wait till sixth edition comes out. And we're starting over. <laughs> oh my god, the one there can only be one D and D. Yeah, we'll uh, yeah. Keep an eye out for our one D and D episodes. We're gonna do more of them. Let us uh, know as if unearthed you're into arcanas uh, unearth themselves. That's right. <laughs> so if you come unearthed, we're finally covering unearthed arcana on the show. Yeah. but it's so big we can't ignore it. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, let's get ready for a long rest. Let's get ready for a long rest. Shout out. To- Hey, everybody. Welcome to The Long Rest. This is a part of the episode where we say thank you. Oh, I should get Patreon shout-outs up, huh? Oh, yeah. I did not yeah, do yeah. that. Will, do you want to talk about like um, <laughs> stuff while I do that? Okay. Uh, yeah, one of the best ways that you can support us is, of course, on Patreon. We try and provide uh, as, as much content on there as we can, early episodes, uh, of my weekly newsletter where I talk about d d stuff, updates on projects, a lot of stuff about the book Star Seekers Guide to the Galaxy, which we are working very hard on. Um. And if you can't support us there, you know, the next best thing is just spread the word, maybe write a review, subscribe, all that other stuff. We we ask you guys to do that because it, it truly helps. And uh, since I've taken the plunge to become, like, quote unquote, fully self-employed, uh, every bit of help 
really literally makes a difference in my household on the day to day. So we appreciate it. And uh, we're going to shout out all you guys here, all the all the newcomers and re-uppers and returners on Patreon. I think we're actually going to have to wait. Let me. Oh, oh, shit. False, false start. <laughs> all the stuff. We'll what set, is this show? All the stuff we'll said is true, but that's I th- true. I think we might not have an updated list of 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 who of shout outs. Okay. Well, in that case, we'll uh, have to get to it. next time. We will time. get to you guys next time. Yeah. Sorry about um, that, but Will's Will's right. Like yeah. all, all that stuff. Uh, being uh, a supporter on Patreon helps a lot. It does make a big difference in our lives. It, it not only helps Will directly in his household, but it also helps us make new shows. Indeed. And and do new projects. Uh, Super Quest Saga is a direct result of that. And now that's going to have its own Kickstarter book. Yeah. Which yes, you guys also helped fund. So Indeed. thank you guys so much. Um, we are. Uh, working on Omega and Unhollowed right now, simultaneously, side by side. We um, have the art piece for the new yearly patron. Uh, uh, what's it? What's the word? Exclusive. Yeah, uh, our yearly exclusive item. Last year um, was a shout out to Demogorgon T-shirt. We got like a custom thumbnail made mm-hmm. with uh, Demogorgon art. Yeah, this year, really cool. uh, I'm gonna let it be a surprise. Um, wait till it's finished. But the art piece is being commissioned as we speak. Yeah, we actually have two things. I think because we're still doing the the other one, right? The you have to remind me. I will. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I William. <laughs> and then uh yeah, uh iTunes reviews super helpful. If you guys want to leave a five star review on there, that's that's a great alternative to um like you know, it's it's something you could do that's impactful and it, it doesn't, you know, take any money from anybody. So that that's that's super helpful if you guys want to do that. And just telling people about the show. Um last episode or we're not supposed to say that anymore. Uh we, we recently <laughs> shouted out uh everybody in Chicago that has been helping us out. Um, yeah, tell, we're we're still looking at you, Chicago, Chi Town. Hit us up. <laughs> let us know and um, and and let continue us... to be our biggest cluster of fans. You're the biggest by cl- growing. You're the biggest cluster of fans out there, and we really appreciate you guys. <laughs> so so thank you. Um, we appreciate all all of you everywhere that listen to the show. Um, uh, yeah, we talked about the new Patreon merch coming through. We talked about. Uh, we mentioned uh, the new live play stuff we've got going on. Flashbang and the Surgeon is going to be out on the feed probably by the time this airs. I hope so. Um, it should have been already. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, check us out on social stuff like Discord. Um, you know, let us. Let yeah, us... we got a Twitter. We got a Discord. We got an Instagram. We're got all on all stuff. those things. If you're on those things, come check us out and add us on those things. Yeah. Or hit me up on the gram, B and D and D20. That's where I'm at. Um, Less confusing. Finally, finally nailed it down. That's Brian and Dungeons and Dragons, and then the number twenty because that kind of makes sense, like a D twenty. Yeah, there we I go. I don't know. The, there was not a lot of options available to me, and that was one of the best ones. I mean, I would, I probably would, like, I don't have social media, and I don't have an Instagram, but if I did, I'd probably be like William at TDC or William TDC or TDC Will. Yeah, I mean, like you, the the out the the app will command what you what you. Your name will be what's available. Interesting. (laughs) All right, guys. We're going to call it a game. We'll call it a game. We'll talk to you guys later. The Dungeon Cast.